Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here for an introduction to second order equations. If we have a differential equation that can be written here in this form a times y double prime plus b times y prime plus c times y equals g, we call this a linear second order equation. For a linear second order equation, this a, b, c, and g that you see in this expression here, these are all functions of x only. They could also be constants, but there shouldn't be any y terms in a, b, c, or g. Here we have a couple of examples and non-examples of linear second order equations. So here you'll notice a is x squared, b is 5x, c is negative 6, and g is cosine x. Those are all functions of at most x. Here a is 1. You'll notice that b is actually 0. We have no y prime term here. And c is 9, and g is x cubed. It is certainly possible that some of these functions may be zero. You don't want a to be zero. If a is zero, you wouldn't have a y double prime term, and so this would not actually be a second order differential equation. Over here for these nonlinear examples, you can see that because the right sides are functions of y, then these are not linear second order equations. For our video series and solving second order equations, we're going to focus on linear second order differential equations. We said that you might have some of b, c, or g being zero when g is zero, in other words, when the right-hand side function is zero, then we call this a homogeneous equation. If you'll remember, with first-order equations, we had a certain type of equation we called a first-order homogeneous equation, where we made a substitution to solve. So just keep in mind, if you're talking about a first-order scenario and you mention a homogeneous equation, that is a different type of thing than when we talk about second-order or above, where we have the differential equation equal to zero can see a difference between homogeneous and non-homogeneous second order equations here. Here we have the right side equal to zero, so these are homogeneous equations. Here we have a cosine 3x and a 2x functions of x on the right hand side, so these are non-homogeneous equations here. If we start thinking about what solutions to these might look like, so here I have x squared y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 3y equal to zero. First we'll note this is definitely linear. We have a is x squared, b is negative 3x, c is 3, g is 0 here. So since g is 0, we also know that this is homogeneous second order equation. When we have a second order homogeneous linear equation, all of these share a thing in common. They all have the same constant solution. And if you look at this equation and think about a constant solution we might plug in for y so that all of its derivatives and these functions add up to 0, y equals 0 is certainly going to be a constant solution for this because the derivatives will also be 0 and so each term here will be 0. We'll keep in mind that y equals 0 is always going to be a constant solution for these linear homogeneous equations, but it's not actually a very interesting solution. So when we're asked to solve, we're going to assume that this is probably not the actual solution that we are looking for. It's generally uninteresting in most circumstances, and this is also called the trivial solution. The idea that yes, we keep in mind it's always a solution, but generally the solutions we seek are something besides this. Throughout our video series that's coming up after this, we will show you different ways of solving different types of second order equations. We're just going to look at a couple of solutions for this particular equation and talk about solutions in general. So if I tell you that y equals x is actually a solution here, so think about for something to be a solution, I need to be able to plug stuff into the equation and get a true statement, right? So y equals x, x would go in here. I would need information for y prime and y double prime. These are pretty easy to get, right? So y prime would equal one, and y double prime, the derivative of one would be zero. And if we plug all of that in here, I think you can see, so the first term we're going to get x squared times 0, so that would be 0, minus 3x times 1, so that would be minus 3x, plus, and then if we plug in x for y here, we would get 3x, and I think you can tell that that is a true statement, right? So y equals x is a solution. There's another pretty basic looking solution for this equation as well. Actually, y equals x cubed is a solution for this equation as well. So if I want to make sure that y equals x cubed is a solution, again, I would need y prime. So y prime is going to be 3x squared in this case. y double prime is going to be 6x, right, in this case. So if we take this information, we put it in there, then we'll get x squared times y double prime, which is 6x, minus 3x times y prime, which is 3x squared, plus 3y, which is 3 times x cubed, equal to 0, and hopefully you can see here we get 6x cubed minus 9x cubed plus 3x cubed, and of course that's going to equal 0. 
So we know that y equals x and y equals x cubed are both solutions for the differential equation. And it actually turns out for second order equations, if y equals x is a solution for this differential equation, then constant multiples of this are also a solution. So in other words, y equals 9x is a solution for this differential equation. You could plug in and check that out as well. Since I know y equals x cubed is also a solution to this differential equation, I could say something like y equals 7x cubed is also a solution for this equation. And you could plug these in and check these out if you don't believe us. Not only is that true, but it also turns out what we call any linear combination of these two is also a solution. So we could find a solution something like y equals 2x minus 4x cubed. So some multiple of this x solution plus or minus some multiple of the x cubed solution. So something else like, you know, y equals negative 5x plus 10x cubed would also be a solution for this equation. And there are many of these, right? So when we say a linear combination, what we really mean is that our solution for this equation is going to be some constant multiple of x plus some other constant multiple of x cubed. And anything that satisfies being this type of linear combination of an x term and an x cubed term is going to be a solution for our differential equation here. So for a linear equation that's homogeneous, our general solution is going to look like y equals c1y1 plus c2y2, some constant multiple of some function plus some constant multiple of another function. Remember this constant multiple of one plus some constant multiple of another, we call that a linear combination of those two functions, y1 and y2. And this y1 and y2 that we find are called the fundamental solution set. So in our previous example, x and x cubed were our fundamental solution set and linear combinations of these make up the general solution. We also want to make a note that the fundamental solution set should also be linearly independent. In other words, with a second order equation, y1 and y2 should not be constant multiples of one another, or they are not the fundamental solution set for your equation. The solution here to a linear homogeneous second order equation here, we also call the complementary function. We call it y sub c sometimes. And when we're solving a non-homogeneous linear second order equation, that complementary function is going to be part of the solution for a non-homogeneous equation, but we'll also have this additional function, which we call a particular function, y sub p. Now that's different than a particular solution, which is when we plug in conditions and solve for the constants, right? This is just some other function of x, what we call the particular function, that we tack onto the complementary function that makes it satisfy the non-homogeneous equation. So you can see here a solution to a non-homogeneous equation is going to be the complementary function plus some other particular function. In other words, to solve a non-homogeneous equation, part of that process may be first solving the homogeneous version of that equation. When we solve these non-homogeneous equations and we have this linear combination plus our particular function, we also want to make a note that our particular function needs to be linearly independent with our solution set from our complementary function as well. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. We've got a lot of second order solution method videos coming up for you in the series. We'll see you then.